We've seen a huge growth in membership in the Open Group over the last few years. We finished last year with 870 memberships from over 50 countries in the world. And a lot of that growth is due to some of the new initiatives that we have, the new forums in the Open Group. And our other reason for existing mostly is um, certification. And particularly in recent years, we're known for certification of people. One of the things that the Open Group is very well known for is enterprise architecture. And we've seen and heard about the renewed interest in many industries and all around the world. One of the big growth areas in the Open Group in terms of membership has been our OSDU forum. A very relevant organisation and participating organisation in that forum has been Energistics, which is a long-standing data transfer standards organisation for the oil and gas industry. It was great that at the beginning of this year we were actually able to bring Energistics within the, the overall activity of the Open Group as an associate organisation so that we can really capitalise on the synergies because the Energistics standards are of great interest to the OSDU community. We want to make sure that they are uh, maintained and evolved and uh, well, well looked after into the future. One of the things that we launched recently was a work group called Initiate, which is uh, focused on India and it's focused on the academic community in India. And the idea is that we will actually embed enterprise architecture into academic programs through Indian universities. And it's had great support initially from uh, not just the academic community, but the commercial world too. And I think it promises to be a really good bedrock of EA learning in India, which is already one of our most important and growing areas in terms of the interest in enterprise architecture that's uh, of anywhere in the world. The Open Group's a truly global organisation, not just with our members, but we have offices all over the world and some of the things that go on in those offices are really helping take up of our standards and the participation in our activities. So, for example, in China, there's a great demand for translation of our standards and the way we've gone about that is really quite innovative. Uh, we've got a, a very thriving, enthusiastic group of volunteers from our China membership and they volunteer to translate particular documents of interest to them and that goes then through our rigorous processes in order to be given the Open Group brand for a, a translation of our standards. In Brazil, which is another area of focus for us, We've had a number of events that have been focused on the local participants in the Open Group and generally conducted in Brazilian Portuguese, but with some English as well. And they've been very well attended and we've had a number of those. And in Brazil, we've seen a real growth in participation and membership generally since we have expanded beyond our enterprise architecture base to some of the other activities in the Open Group. India has been a great success story for the Open Group in the last few years. We've worked with the Indian government for a number of years now and two or three years ago they published a national standard called INDEA, I-N-D capital E-A, which is all about enterprise architecture and is based very, very much on our TOGAF standard. And the way they've implemented it is such that any enterprise architecture work that is done for the Indian government now needs to be done in conformance with the standard. What that means is uh, it's a great opportunity for our ecosystem of trainers and consultants and member organizations to uh, get some great business there for training and consultancy in the standard because they're already experts in TOGAF and they're required to know that. One of the fastest growing forums we have in the Open Group, and in fact it's now our largest forum both in participation and membership numbers, is our OSDU forum. It started as a group of operators in the oil and gas world who had a business problem to solve. And that problem was they spend a lot of money on exploration and the data that they get, largely because of the siloed nature of the way it's, uh, it, it's created, means that they can actually utilize very little of it. As an industry average, it's about 10% of the data that they get they can actually use. So the work that they're doing there is to create a cloud-based platform where they can uh, put all of this data on and analyze it from end to end and make far more use of it. Now the forum is looking at how to utilize the platform for the challenges of new energy, which of course is what everybody wants. Our newest forum 
is working on a topic that's dear to everyone's heart, and that's emissions, energy emissions of, of all kinds, but starting with greenhouse gas emissions. And the forum is called the Open Footprint Forum because it's all about creating standards to capture, measure, and then do something about the energy emissions across all industries. And the real problem that they're trying to address is there is just no common standard for doing that right now. Everyone is reporting uh, energy emissions in their own way, using their own standards. There are more and more requirements out there to report on energy emissions. And what this forum will deliver is a consistent way of doing that, one approach that will work across all industries and will actually be done in conjunction with an open source project which will create an implementation of the standard that means a company can just take that, implement it in their own environment and they'll have a consistent way of reporting on their emissions going forward. A significant new strategic initiative that you'll hear more about in the coming months from the Open Group is our Open Digital Standards Initiative. And what that is all about is working on evolving our standards and packaging our standards in a new way which better reflects how they're actually used in the marketplace. That is, they're used together. You use the right standard at the right time for the right job. So that involves us really working on making the standards more directly interoperable and usable together. The initial standards that will be included in this initiative will be the Digital Practitioner Body of Knowledge Standard, or DPBOC, as some of you may know it as, as well as the IT for IT version 3 snapshot, and the Open Agile Architecture Standard, or OAA, as well as our TOGAF and Archimate Standard. One of the things that we've just announced, and we've been waiting to do it for quite some time now, and it's fairly eagerly anticipated, it's a new version of our TOGAF Standard, and it's called the TOGAF Standard 10th Edition. And what the 10th edition brings is a lot more content on how to actually use the standard, how to implement it in practice. It's really quite an exciting development and it's not the end, this is the beginning. We'll be able to roll out more content as it's created within the Open Group Architecture Forum. Also in the Open Group, we have two US-only consortia. What that means is membership is only open to US organizations, although their output and the standards we publish are open to anyone anywhere in the world to use. And one of those is the Sensor Open Systems Architecture Consortium. And what they're working on is sensors particularly military sensors and an open architecture approach to that whole world. It's, it's really a growth forum from the Open Group's point of view and there seems to be a lot of interest in that forum. They have released, uh, at the end of 2021, they released the first version of their reference architecture, uh, edition one. The other US consortia is the FACE consortium, Future Airborne Capability Environment, that stands for. And it's interesting I say it's US only. It has been since its inception in 2010, but this year they are just about to open it up slightly to participation outside US only organizations. So it will be open to a group called the Five Eyes, which will add the UK, Canada, New Zealand and Australia to the US as the, the base of participation. Music